Alright, so today I'm doing something a little bit different. It is another tier list. However, I've only ever done one other tier list, but it was music related. And I don't think anybody else on YouTube has done a tier list like this. I could be wrong, there's a lot of videos on YouTube, but anyways. Uh, what I'm doing is an improvised weapon tier list. And what I mean by that is I'm doing a list of weapons, or rather, th these are not weapons. These are not dedicated weapons. These are not like guns or swords or warhammers or whatever. These are things that a normal person would have lying around or a normal person would have easy access to that aren't meant to be meant to be used as weapons, but they could be. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm a fan of uh, channels like uh, Chativersity and um, Scalagrim, and they analyze fantasy weapons in this kind of critical uh, light. Sometimes we'll talk about uh, improvised weapons, like uh, Chativersity talks about the crowbar, and then the frying pan, and um, I kind of want to expand on that idea and see how much I can... I, I want to apply that same kind of critical thinking, kind of practical sense, and trying to figure out what is the best weapon that you can use that you probably have lying around in your house. Before I uh, continue, I suppose I do need to uh, kind of say a, a few things for, for context. I'm not going to be comparing any of these weapons to dedicated weapons because that would be an unfair comparison. I'm going to be comparing these to the other improvised weapons. And then the other thing is I'm mostly going to be thinking of these weapons in the context of home defense. So. With all that out of the way, now we can start and I'm just going to go in the order with the way that I have them listed in my uh, Photoshop document. And the first one that I have is the crowbar. So I have a bit to go off of based on Shadowversity's video. What he said was, it's very heavy. So if somebody's wearing armor, steel plate armor he was referring to, it would be pretty good at denting it and then if you get the pointy end I can puncture through it, but it's so heavy, especially for its size, it's not that big, and it's really heavy, so it's really hard to uh, recover from swings and come around for a second uh, swing, although if you use it for with two hands, it kind of alleviates that. And I kind of can attest to this firsthand because I actually own a crowbar, and it's, it was actually smaller than the one that he had in the video, but it did feel heavy, and then when I used it in two hands, even though it was pretty short, it kind of felt weird to try to use it with two hands, but it did help a lot. So. The advantage that it has going for it is you can just use the blunt end to hit people with or you can use the pointed end and really like puncture someone's skull with that. Again, in the context of home defense, they're not going to be wearing armor, but still would do tons of damage anywhere on the body pretty much because of just how much blunt force it would have. The problem is it doesn't have a whole lot of reach and it's really heavy so it's hard to d redirect, but it is pretty lethal. As far as improvised weapons go, I actually feel like this one needs to go up pretty high just because it is pretty practical. I'm going to put it in A just for now and see how I feel about that later. Uh, so next we got the screwdriver. So everybody has a screwdriver. It's very pointy. You can stab someone pretty easy with that. And I suppose while I'm talking about the scr screwdriver, I should also talk about the ice pick because it's almost the same thing if you want to use it as a weapon. So the problems with the this weapon is that barely have any reach. It's really not really that much more than, than your fist, but it can be lethal. But you can't, you can't bludgeon somebody with it, and you can't cut somebody with it. You can only stab, so it's kind of limited in that sense. Because it can be lethal, but it's got a lot of limitations, I'm going to put it in C for now and see how I feel about that. Okay, so next we got the shovel. The shovel is interesting. Because this one, out of all the ones that we've talked about so far, this is the only one that really has a lot of reach. You can kind of use it, assuming it's like one of the, the types of shovels that you use two hands with, to like, like the type that you would dig a hole to bury a body in, like that type of shovel. With that kind of long shovel, you can kind of use it like a pole arm, like a spear almost, or like a pole axe or something like that. It has a pointed end, so if you, you can't like, I don't think you'd be able to stab somebody with it, like and have it penetrate. But it would hurt a lot if it doesn't cut through the skin. If you don't want to jab with it, you can always just whack somebody in the head. Like, it, the shovel has a pretty wide head, I guess the, the word would be. And that shit would hurt. Like, if I'm not mistaken, all the weight on the shovel is focused on that part because usually that's made out of metal and then the rest is made out of wood. It would be a little bit awkward to strike with it though because uh, of the shape. It kind of has like a scooped shape, you know, for it so it can dig stuff up. But still, it would be pretty, pretty devastating, I think. A lot of blunt force, 
damage. If you get somebody with the edge, that can really do a lot of damage. You could probably crack a skull with that. You kind of run into the disadvantage that all pole arms have, which is if somebody gets in real close, you kind of can't use it anymore. The fact that that you don't even have to be close to the person and, and you can keep them at bay and kind of dispatch them from there, I think, puts it above the, all, the other weapons we've looked at so far. So I think for now, I'm going to put it in S tier. Okay, so next one we got the guitar, the electric guitar. I specifically chose an electric guitar because it's an, an acoustic guitar. I think that you'd only be able to use it once. An acoustic guitar would probably break if you hit somebody with it. An electric guitar is more solidly built. And uh, I also kind of picked it because um, you kind of you kind of see it used as an improvised weapon a lot in pop culture. Uh, like there is the game Dead Rising, I think it's called. Uh, well, everything is a weapon in that game, but there's an electric guitar, and, it, and I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the better weapons you can get. So there's a couple things you can do with it. You can the, probably the best thing you can do is grab it by the neck and hit with the body. It kind of makes sense because the neck is thin enough so you can wrap your hands around it, and then the body is kind of big so you can hit people with it. But I do not think this is a a very wieldy weapon at all. I think it would be too top-heavy. It would be really difficult to swing. You have some reach on it. You would have more reach with a guitar than with a crowbar, but not as much as the shovel. But I just think, I feel like it would be too awkward. And then plus, um, even an electric guitar, I feel like, would break if it takes too much um, stress. It's kind of hard because it does have more reach than like a screwdriver. But I don't think it's as reliable because it might break and it's just too awkward. Um, I'm gonna put it in C. I'm gonna put it behind the screwdriver and I'm gonna see how I feel about that later. Okay, so next we've got the chainsaw. So this is a very iconic improvised weapon. Uh, the go-to zombie killer. The, the demon slayer, you know, from the Doom series. I feel like most people would assume that the chainsaw is probably gonna be one of the best weapons, but I would, uh, I would differ because first you have to turn the damn thing on. Like, if it even, okay, so first it has to have gas. Then you need to yank on the on the thingy to turn it on, and it might not turn on the first time. So it's gonna so either you might not be able to use it at all, depending if it has gas, and it's gonna take a while to to start up. And if a guy's running at you, that's gonna be a real bad situation. But let's say that you run into your shed, and the and the guy that broke into your house is running after you, and you uh, you get enough of a head start on him that. You can get into your shed and kind of close the door behind you and he's running after you. You start with the chainsaw, the guy opens the door, you turn it around and, and this guy is face to face with a dude with a chainsaw in his hands. He's going... Brruh, brruh, brruh. Okay, so what then? The chainsaw, I think, has to go up a bit in the list just because of the intimidation factor. Like, you do not want to mess with a dude with a chainsaw. So that's... that. I'm, I'm keeping that in mind. However, when it comes to actually trying to kill somebody with it or hurt them. It's a bit of an awkward weapon. The way that you hold it is a little bit weird. I feel like uh, you wouldn't be able to do like kind of wide swings, like kind of like a sword type of a thing. The angles that you'd be able to swing at would be very limited because you have to hold it like this. So you, if you do it like to the side, you can do it down, you can do kind of diagonal. I mean, I guess you can do this a little bit. This will start to get awkward, but like from from lower and like this. Oh, you can't do that. You can do jabs pretty good. It has a decent amount of reach. But here's the thing. Um, chainsaws, it's not like a lightsaber that as soon as you touch somebody with it that it's gonna do damage. Maybe you can do like a surface level cut, but the way chainsaws work, you press it against something and you hold it there and you go and it takes a couple of seconds. Like if you use, use it to cut down a tree, it takes a couple of seconds. If a person's moving around, you're not gonna be able to do that. So. Yeah, at most, if you just get a, a glance at him, it's just gonna do like a real surface level cut. Because of that, I think it, it has to go down in the list. But like, you, you almost don't need to try to hurt the guy, because if you're running at a guy with a chainsaw, chances are they're gonna run away. I'm gonna put it at B. It's high up because of the intimidation factor, but it's lower than uh, the crowbar because it's, I don't think it's, it has the potential to be that lethal. At least easily lethal. You can kill somebody with it, but they have to be... You'd have to get them in a situation where, where they're kind of still. Okay, so next we, next we got the kitchen knife. You might think of the kitchen knife as like an actual weapon because it is a knife and knives are weapons. 
But it's not a dedicated weapon. It's meant to cut tomatoes, not people. But you can use it to cut people like tomatoes. So a kitchen knife is not going to be as robust as like a combat knife or, or a dagger. It may not be as sharp depending on how you maintain your knives. But the thing about the kitchen knife is that it can be really lethal, especially if you keep it sharp. You have the tip that you can stab with, which I mean is lethal right there. You can do cuts with it, although you're not gonna kill somebody with a cut with a, with a kitchen knife, I don't think, because if you try to swing some uh, a knife at somebody, there's just not a lot of weight to drive the edge like deep into the person. So you might do like a surface level cut, maybe like, like let's say they're grabbing you and you uh, and you can't really stab them, but you just drag the, the edge along their arm or something, that, that can kind of make them let go of you maybe. Overall, the knife is really good, I feel like. It's pretty versatile, pretty fast, pretty lethal, but it doesn't have any reach. And that's the problem. I feel like it belongs in B tier. Reach is super important. And the crowbar has a little bit more reach than putting it below the crowbar, but I'm going to put it above the chainsaw. Because you can kill somebody with a knife easier than the chainsaw, Chainsaw, I think, because of uh, the fact that you need to press down on somebody. Okay, so next we got the humble rock. So a rock can be lethal, it depends on the size of the rock and the, and the weight of the rock. You just pick it up and you whack somebody with it, you can um, do a lot of damage. Um, but then you can also throw it. I mean, technically you can throw any of the other weapons, but I feel like a rock is, would be the easiest to throw because they're usually they're kind of round. And you can kind of throw it, you know, almost like a baseball. Again, depending on the size of the rock, if you throw it at somebody, that's going to do a lot of damage. The thing about the rock, though, is that it doesn't have any reach. It even has less reach than something like a screwdriver because the screwdriver has like a point and the rock is just kind of just you know, a little ball that you hold. Okay, my ca camera shut off for a second, so I'm uh, not sure where I left off, but I was just saying that I'm not sure if I would rather have a rock or a guitar, because you can throw the rock, which kind of solves the, the issue about its range or reach, but then you lose your weapon. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in D tier, and just see how I feel about that afterwards. I've been saying that a lot, but once there, I put everything on the list, I think it's going to be easier to kind of figure out how to organize things a little bit more. Anyways, now we've got the frying pan, another one that's seen a lot in pop culture. Lord of the Rings, Tangled, I don't know, probably some other movies. The frying pan has some reach. You can whack people pretty good with it, uh, with the flat part or maybe the edge. Uh, Shadowversity talked about it a bit. He did say that you would be able to do more damage with the edge, however, because it's at an angle, it would be really hard to or awkward to do that. And then, um, one of the advantages with the uh, frying pan is that you can kind of use it like a buckler. You can um, block things with it if you just kind of hold it out in front of you. So maybe you can block like a knife or something. Well, now that I think of it, I suppose a guitar could kind of do that too because it's got this wide body that you can use. That's something that I didn't consider actually. Okay, but let, uh, going back to the um, frying pan. I think it can be a very useful, wacky implement. Uh, and then you got the advantage of maybe being able to block stuff. Might be kind of awkward, but I think you can do it. It's kind of heavy, which will make it awkward to use, but that kind of comes to its advantage in, in terms of just blunt force damage. Is it better than the screwdriver? Well, it's got more reach, and it's more awkward to use. Oh, I'm so conflicted. I'm gonna put it in C tier. I'm just gonna put it there. I don't know if it goes above the screwdriver or the guitar just yet. I'll see what I'll do with it later. Okay, so next we got the chair. And you see people use the chair every so often. For some reason, the uh, lion tamers, I think they use chairs uh, to kind of keep the lions at bay. Either that or it's just in the cartoons, or I, I can't remember. I think in Jackie Chan movies, he might have used a chair uh, as a weapon or as a tool to, to help him fight. And um, and then I guess it also depends on the chair because if it's just okay, let's let's start with like this normal wooden chair right here. To be honest, I think this has to be one of the worst ones because it's really huge and really bulky, and you can't really hit anyone with it. The only thing that I feel like you'd be able to do with it is kind of defend yourself with it because it's really big and wide, and kind of keep people away from you. But that's it. You can't really strike. I mean, I guess you can kind of push like. Keeping in the in the theme of keeping people away from you, if you just grab it, but even, where would you even grab it from? Because the if it was like a stool, 
could grab it from the seat and then use the legs to kind of push people and kind of drive them away from you. But with it, but this has a backrest, so you can't just kind of hold it in front of you. You got to hold the seat and the backrest and then do it like that. It's like, ugh, it's really not a good situation. However, what if it's a, a metal folding chair, like how you see in wrestling that they fold it up and then they hit people? That's interesting because it's usually they're made out, made out of metal, so they have a good amount of weight to them, so so you can you know really whack people with it. And the other thing is you can kind of hold it flat and kind of use it to defend yourself, it, kind of like a shield almost. Your fingers would be exposed because you have to wrap your fingers around the thing in order for for it to work. So you know right here you're exposed, but all your body is good uh, from a defensive aspect. I think a folding chair might be really good actually. I still think it might be too heavy and big and awkward to try to hit people with it, but you can do it. To be honest, either if you have um, a chair like this or a folding chair, I feel like the best strategy you have is just put it in front of you and kind of ram people with it. So it's kind of limited. Um, you can kind of use it to defend yourself, but it doesn't. it's limited in offensive capability. I think I'm going to put it in E tier, pretty low. Okay, so next we got a glass bottle. Uh, I suppose it kind of depends on um, the state of the glass bottle. If the bottle is intact and you just want to hit somebody over the head with it, I don't think that's a good weapon. Because uh, even if it's filled with um, something, some kind of liquid, it's not going to be that heavy and it's going to break once you hit somebody with it and maybe the glass will kind of get in their skin, but it's not really going to do any kind of deep damage. So the it's not going to cut deep and it doesn't have enough weight to do blunt damage. Now, once the bottle is broken, you can still use it as a weapon and kind of try to use it to cut people or stab people with. But still, the jagged edges, it's not a dedicated edge like something with a knife. You you might not really be able to cut at all with it. And the thing is, too, you have this round thing with a bunch of jagged parts on it. So multiple things are going to be trying to get in. And, and, and the force that you, let's say you try to stab, the force that you apply is going to get distributed on all of those edges and all the circle of this broken bottle. So none of them are going to get in very deep. And then on top of that, you have the rest of the bottle that has a somewhat of a thick couple centimeters, maybe one centimeter, I don't know, you know, thick of, of glass. So you, even if some of those tips do penetrate, it's not going to dig in all the way. So I feel like the glass bottle is F tier. It's... Um, it might deter somebody momentarily if you whack them over the head with it, but other than that, it's a one-time use and it's not lethal. Okay, so next we've got the pitchfork. The pitchfork is kind of like the shovel in the sense that um, it's also kind of like a polearm. In fact, it's kind of like a spear, like it's kind of like a trident. So you can use it as a spear and stab people. In fact, the tips on that, I'm not sure how sharp the uh, the tips on a pitchfork need to be for it to be able to do its job. So I don't think it's going to be as sharp as like the tip of a kitchen knife, but they're sharp. If you really stab somebody with that, they, they did. It does kind of have the disadvantage of having multiple prongs. So eh, I mean, this is an advantage and disadvantage because the multiple prongs means that it's, it's wider, so you have more of a chance to hit them. But then you're also distributing the force among four tips as opposed to just one that can really go in really deep. Uh, you can't use it to bludgeon people with the way you can do with a shovel. But I suppose the, the benefit that it gains is that it's better at stabbing than a shovel. And pitchforks are typically longer than the average shovel. So I do think it belongs in S tier because of that reach factor and because of the stabbiness of it. But is it better than a shovel? That's the question. Ah, uh, da da da. I'm gonna say this on par with the shovel. It's equal. They have disadvantages and advantages to each other. So this is um, an equal playing field right here. So now that I've got all of them on a space on the list, now I want to see if I can kind of go through it and see if maybe I need to correct any of this. So I'm pretty comfortable with these being on top because they have great reach and that's really important in any fight. The crowbar has more reach than the knife and it can be pretty lethal. The chainsaw is extremely intimidating, but it's difficult to take advantage of its lethal potential. You know what, to be honest, the fact that with the chainsaw, you may not even have to get in the fight in the first place might make it better than all the other weapons. No, but then you have to turn it on first. See, the the chainsaw 
the effectiveness of the chainsaw depends on how soon you can turn it on. Because once you turn it on, chances are they're running. But if you can't turn it on, you're going to wish you had another one of these weapons. I'm comfortable putting the chainsaw where it is because it has so many disadvantages. You still have gas, you need to turn it on. On the off chance they decide to fight you anyways, it's going to be awkward to use and it's going to be difficult to really get it to be lethal. So I think I'm comfortable leaving it there. To be honest, the only parts that I have issues with is potentially these three because this has reach, but like I said, it's going to be really heavy and awkward to use. You can use it to defend yourself if you kind of try to use it like a shield. It'd be, it'd be a really awkward shield though, like you'd, you'd probably have to grab um, the neck with one hand and then the top of the body with the other and kind of do this, but it's really heavy so it'd be hard to redirect wherever you need it. Uh, I guess the advantage is it can, um, it's kind of long so you can kind of use it like kind of like if you have like a pole arm and something's coming at you, you can kind of, you know, hold it up and catch a sword with it or something. In this case, maybe a knife. Most people, I think, if they're, they're going to break into a house, they're going to bring a knife. But still, it's like really hard to really use, I think, effectively. The frying pan, I think, is a little bit easier to use, but it's still awkward. You can kind of defend yourself with it. The guitar might break, though. And I think I'm pretty confident with everything, how it is, seeing as how, for the most part, it's kind of going from most lethal to least lethal. I think a screwdriver is more lethal than a guitar because of that pointed end. But the guitar is more awkward to use and has the potential to break, unlike the frying pan. So I'm going to move the guitar behind the frying pan. And I think that's pretty good. I think it's good where it is. The chair, I think, is good where it is. And then the bottle, I think, is good where it is. So that's everything. I think I have created pretty solid tier list for improvised weapons. Tell me what you think about this tier list in the comments. If you hear or not how you would have organized it, if you uh, want to see more kinds of these videos, maybe you have suggestions for other improvised weapons that I could create a new list with, or maybe just add to this list. Let me know as well. If anybody watching the video uh, can uh, like try to tweet this or whatever at, at someone like Scalagrim or Shadowversity and they watch the video and I get comments from them about what they thought about my analysis that would like make my day. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it and I'll see you guys next time. Damn, who that has a motherfucker down the street? Oh shit, that's me, and I'm about to make life my bitch. They know what's up in this one man, war machine. Two in the head, one in the chest, fucking clean. Top tier badass, sensing to the ass, that's